All right, everybody, Economic Ninja here. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. We're gonna talk about real estate taxes and inflation, and we're gonna actually talk more about all kinds of different taxes and what happens with inflation. So without further ado, oh wait, before the intro. If you're new to this channel, you could do me a huge favor. Maybe hit the little like button. That's the thumbs up button. Next, it's right next to the coffee icon. You should, there should be a coffee icon here. And subscribe. Thanks, guys. Well, let's do this. All right, we're back. We have our coffee. Economic Ninja's ready to rock and roll. This question comes from Zach. It's a great question too. Hey Ninja, I don't usually send emails, but I was wondering your thought on inflation and taxes. The higher inflation means the more property tax, and if wages go up, may push some people into higher tax brackets. Just a thought. Thought it would be awesome to make a video about it. Zach, that is an excellent question. So we're gonna break this down to two things. We're gonna talk about, ooh, and I don't have my notes with me because there's a, um, I don't know about a cardboard shortage, but I just couldn't find any. So we're gonna talk about um, real estate taxes first, and we're gonna talk about income. So. This is interesting because I'm gonna be able to bring you back all the way back to 2007, 2008, when we started to see the housing market slump. Yes, it is true. The housing market, the crash started before what everyone would say is the beginning of the Great Recession in September of 2008. So in 2007, 2008, a real estate sales started to stall. Then they started to fall, which means the prices started to fall as well. Now, those two time uh, uh, points are always separate and they, could, they don't always, uh, every real estate cycle stay the same you know, distance in time. Uh, it just depends on the magnitude of the situation. But by and large, home buyers had seen and homeowners that had owned homes way before the buildup in the early 2000s, let's say people that owned homes in the 90s, the 80s, um, uh, uh, all over the country had seen their property taxes increase because of the bubble in real estate. Because why? Real estate is appraised every year or so, uh, depending on what state you're in, what county, and uh, a determination is made on how much you will pay in tax that year. Uh, usually, the uh, property tax stays the same, right? Uh, because counties don't like getting in trouble, or states, uh, it's counties and cities don't like uh, getting a uh, a bunch of pissed off voters screaming and yelling at them every time they raise the property tax. So uh, what would happen is as the property uh, values rose every year, people would pay more and more in taxes on those properties. Until all of a sudden something changed because people really didn't think they just like most people just went when this is why bubbles form in anything, not only real estate, well, I guess this is life. We're paying more in taxes, Martha, because this year than last year, our home's worth $100,000 more, so they had this weird wealth effect. But ironically, because they weren't selling their home, and if you see the airplanes behind me, my buddies are selling, oh, it's perfect. <laughs> my buddies are flying RC airplanes. I said, hey, throw some, uh, some acrobatics behind me, and it just crashed. That's not good. Very awkward. You're gonna see them walk behind me pretty soon. So by and large, what would happen is, is that people would uh, be paying more and they wouldn't care because they had this wealth effect. But ironically, they didn't sell the property, so they didn't have the actual wealth in their hand, but yet more money was being drained out of their accounts because they're having to pay higher and higher taxes, okay? Well, when 2008 happened and it was obvious, it was all over the headlines that home prices were collapsing, then people started to get ticked off because they got that next tax bill in 2009 and they went, whoa, 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 whoa. Why didn't my, my home fell in value? Why is my tax still the same? Or maybe in some cases even higher. And there are people starting to petition. Ironically, the, the, the tax collectors weren't too worried about changing the values, but uh, there were people that were suing uh, local and state, not local state governments, but uh, uh, municipalities and, um, and county governments uh, that were saying, hey, you know, incorporated cities saying, my house isn't worth that much, I'm not paying uh, tax. And then we saw a time period of taxes starting to be decreased all across the board. Well, that's about to happen now. So uh, when we see the housing prices start to stall uh, because of stalling, uh, uh, stalling sales, sorry guys, going off the top of my head, and then they start to fall, what I want you guys to do is be on top of that. When you see that Zestimate drop and you get that new tax bill, you might wanna call up your local tax authority and say, hey, my house isn't worth that much. 
And uh, now moving into the income portion, this uh, person, Zach, has a great point. You see, uh, like in the 1980s, where uh, wages increased pretty dramatically in the early 80s to, uh, to uh, deal with the heavy inflation that was going on through the late 70s, remind you the time points, okay? Um, the relief didn't come when the real pain was happening, right? What happens is tax brackets didn't change too quick. So yes, by and large, people were paying more in taxes because their tax bracket, the tax bracket system hadn't changed, right? You know, if you made up to 50,000, you paid this much tax. If you made up to 70,000 in that block, you made paid that much tax. And since everybody was getting more uh, pay raises, uh, which was increasing in inflation over time um, because of the destruction of that currency, because the currency kept getting printed and de devalued, everything went up more. And it sounds funny, but even, you know, a pack of chewing gum or a, a disposable item, you now paid more sales tax on it because it's worth more. It costs you more. It's not worth more. Even down to disposable razors. Hey, it used to be, you know, a dollar, you know, for a pack of 10. Now it's four bucks for a pack of 10. Well, you're still paying that same percentage of sales tax on that. So I want you to realize those kind of things because it's not only the destruction of your currency because your purchasing power is less because things are costing more, whether it be disposable razors or even something as big as real estate. But now you're being even, you're taxed even more. So I want you to think about that when you're preparing and you're buying things longer term, whatever it is, you're planning for your wealth uh, to not be destroyed. And that's where locking value up sometimes um, is a good thing. You know, locking up your dollars in some type of asset, hard physical asset, because you're not seeing the destruction of not only the dollar falling and the cost of that good going up, but you're also saving the tax on it. So thank you so much, Zach, for that uh, uh, idea for a video. It's a great point. I hope you guys got something out of it. If you do, please, hey, hashtag inflation. In, in this video and, and hit the thumbs up for me. And if you're new, please subscribe, it'd be awesome. Thank you so much. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.